afternoon. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, uh, August 13th, 2023. I'm Larry Rhodes or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, it's me on the Wombat. And for a special guest today, we have John Richards all the way from England. Hello, Welcome. I'm not a wombat. Hmm? I'm not what? a wombat. Oh, you're not a wombat. Well, we don't have them. We, we, have we them can't all here. be that lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we have rats and mice, but no wombat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Hopefully, wait, Joe Pirate I, Higgs will join us in a bit. I just realized that the word not actually has a T at the end of it. We've been doing it wrong this whole time, Larry. <laughs> We've been doing it wrong this whole time. Not uh, that's the how you pronounce it. Now I know. Yes, now I know. Yes. Uh, uh, not yes. a wombat versus I'm not a wombat. It's no. like oh, <laughs> get some consonants. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends on where you are in England or, or even northern New, uh, New York. You'll just drop those T's all together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a bunch yeah. of water bottles behind you. That's like, and, that's and of course, and of course, well, in France, yeah. it's actually against the law to pronounce any of the last. Six letters of a word. <laughs> oh, okay. well, that explains a lot. No, yeah. Anyway, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, rational thought, free thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, God, uh, religious faith, pastafarianism, yep. gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non believer in your town, well, you're just not. Even here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have mm. a group of over a thousand of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, well, what's our topic today? What's your end goal, atheists? What do you really want? But we're going to get into that. I want to do a quick little catch-up, starting with our own John Richards. John Richards, how you been? I hadn't seen you in the last week uh, due to a disc golfing venture with some friends. How you been since then? Yeah, we, we all missed you last Aww, week. That's sweet. We, we took the, the opportunity to put our feet up and have some time off. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. <laughs> what, what, what was your uh, particular feet up relaxation highlight? Well, um, normally it would be a bit of cricket, maybe, and uh, possibly uh, uh, only new. As a, a spectator, you understand. <laughs> ah, okay, I was about to ask. I was about to ask. How did, uh, by the way, you said Australia was playing, and uh, did they do well or not? Did did your bets? Well, work? it was a fantastic series. You know, it was the, the test series, which is fought for an urn that is literally that big. You know, you know, in all the other competitions, they have an enormous trophy that you can barely lift. Sure. Well, well this is the size of an egg cup. Okay. Okay, right. but it's it's regarded. It's not what it is; it's what it represents that matters. <laughs> two two wildly blistering things that I'm taking for granted in this conversation is the word "earn" for I guess trophy. Is it the same thing? Uh, mm, no, it, is it "earn"? Well, not, not Larry, can you help me out? Are you familiar with that term? When not I when I hear urn, I think of cremation and same, remains. Same, same, yeah. same. Oh, so it's a lot like that. So they get <laughs> they get cremated remains of somebody, well, and then an egg it, cup, the size of an egg cup. You should know what the size of an egg cup is. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, egg cups. Of course, I see them every day. You know, I'm all about my egg cups. <laughs> I'm an egg. I'm like, where's my cup? I can't hold this with my bare hands. All right, go ahead. where's my ketchup? Well, right. it, it's it's a container that's ah. on a, It's got a, a base, a stem, and then a bowl. Which oh, is so it's a tiny, of... tiny little guy. Well, that, I'm defining an urn. Ah, like it's like a goblet, though, right? It's like yeah, a. Yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. okay, okay. Very similar cool. to a goblet, yeah. But this one is, is a little tiny. It's made of clay, I believe. You know, baked clay. Really? And it, the thing about it is that it contains some ashes. So it is very much like a cremation urn in miniature. But okay. the ashes are said to be of the bales, those are the little pieces of wood on top of the stumps that you mustn't disturb, otherwise you will lose your opportunity to bat. So oh. th those- It's those little horizontal pieces exactly. on top of the vertical. Ah, okay. That's right. Okay. Yeah, you, you got it. And what happened, 
I don't know, a hundred years ago, was for the first time ever, Australia, which, you know, had only recently been populated by convicts. <laughs> Which we <laughs> I like the little giggle. Go ahead, go ahead. You know, there are other people in Australia before you guys dropped the convict. Yes, on, yes, right? yes. Okay, yes, yeah. Yes. A little bit of history that they don't teach as much. But yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah. Bit like America in that respect. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but we deported the people that we uh, disapproved of to Australia, <laughs> and uh, after a few generations, they'd grown enough to have actually generated a cricket team. And okay. they they had the effrontery to try and play us, <laughs> and of course, season after season we beat them until one day, <laughs> one one year I should say, Australia actually beat the English team. And back home here, it was just it. The headline was cricket has died. Wow. <laughs> So the, the bales, the bales, the little horizontal pieces of wood on top of the vertical stumps, they were burned and the ashes were put in this urn to signify the death of English cricket. And every four years now, we well, compete well, to win. Hubris. <laughs> we compete. And if you don't win, it's dead. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So every four years now, we compete against Australia to win these very prized ashes. OK. Ah, OK. And it's and in the clay. It's not like a cup of clay. The, the No, no. It's they're, they're crumbled up and they're inside the little urn with a lid on it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. And You're trying to get back all the ashes to, to resurrect, resurrect uh, <laughs> cricket in some sort of like religious fashion. You'll you'll. Damn it, we want to win back our ashes. <laughs> you got to get back your ashes. That's it. I see. So it's a personal stake. That's that's a very yeah. interesting story. So, so let me tell you, let me answer your question, which is that the the recent series is called mm -hmm. a, a, a test series. And there's five matches, each of which can last five days long. And the recent series was phenomenal. It was edge of the seat stuff. We were there biting our fingernails, wondering who was going to win. And it was a, a draw because we won two, they won two, and the right, middle one right. was drawn. The middle, oh. nobody won the middle one. So, okay. but, but because we didn't beat them, they kept the ashes. Oh, so you, it's one set of ashes. They, can't, they don't even make a new trophy. It's like the Stanley Cup. It's just, it's like, yeah, we got to yeah, get our trophy right. back. We're doing another competition. No, no, that's hardcore I, stakes. Hardcore stakes. Yeah. Hardcore stakes. I, I, I think, I th I'm not sure whether the ashes travel with the winner. So John, maybe they, here's maybe your they in, in, uh, in Lords, the, the London cricket ground, North London cricket ground. Next, next or maybe they just... travel. Perhaps if you win them, you get to take them home and bring mm. them back next, next time. I don't know. Good point. Next time, just pray more. Because <laughs> yes. that never fails. The winner yeah. always is the person that prayed to God to win. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It never it fails. Always, it always, sure. It always fails when I want a parking space. So God never helps me out there. Well, you know, the God of parking spaces is a, is a very tiny office. It's backed up. You know, it, it is what it is. Larry, <laughs> would love to check in with you. How you been, my friend? I'm fine. I took my motorcycle out last weekend uh, after the show. Well, after what we, when we would have had the show. And uh, I rode for three hours, and wow. it was way too much. <laughs> I did uh -huh. not want to do that again. I kept wanting to go down to uh, Dayton and visit the the site of the Scopes trial. In Georgia? Uh, no, no. It's halfway between Knoxville and Chattanooga. So oh, it's only okay. 50, it's another 50 day. miles south and then 20 miles west oh, from God. the interstate. Okay. And uh, the farther I got, the tireder I got. But I'm, I kept telling myself, oh, you know, you come this far. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had a show Whoa. on that, you know, the vested interest and the, yeah. the costs. Yeah, um, the sunk cost. I yeah. got about 30 miles away from it. And I thought, oh, I'm going to go home because yeah. I don't want to add another hour to where I am. And I'm already tired. Sure. But sure. when you're 73, you know, you just you get tired oh. easy, more easily. How did you get through the weather? Because like we had scattered storms all last. Uh, I never really encountered any okay, on my good. trip. 
Okay, well, that's good. That's good. I mean, I'd hate to see you get stuck somewhere. But like, again, we were talking before the show started that you're in a- Yeah, well, that's what made us so tiring. It was it was really hot. Some of them beating down on me all the time. So- If only but, they made like a motorcycle that had like two extra set of wheels so you can't fall over and like- maybe <laughs> And an enclosure. Yeah, and like doors maybe, like- a, And air, air conditioning window, so maybe. Would, and maybe like airbags. I think that'd yeah. be pretty- interesting yeah. sounds, i might have to do that next time uh, that sounds like two motorcycles strapped together <laughs> <laughs> hey you might be on to something done uh mm -hmm. hey i uh had a good weekend as well uh like i said i went out and uh tried to do a lot of things that um i did was losing time in so i was playing some more music uh we had a disc golf uh mini tournament that i was involved in got even i was really happy about that at a new course um, but the cool thing was I got to play on a card card is how they break up players and everybody on the card. I already knew. So it was just like being out with your friends and it was a fun time because I knew all the four, the, the, the three other people who were with me and we were all having a great time. And one of the guys there was like a particularly good friend of mine. I've been over to his place. Uh, I've met his parents. I've met his wife. I've seen his kid like slowly grow older from being diapers, being in diapers to like walking and talking. And we were having a conversation. He pulls me out over to the side. He's like, listen, can I ask you something? And uh, I said, yeah, absolutely. He's like, okay, I don't want you to take this personally, but you're an atheist, right? He's like, yeah, of course I'm an atheist. Like I'm very open about that, right? With my friends. Mm -hmm. And I knew he was a, I knew he was homeschooled. And I also knew like he was very, that, that typically tend, where we live at typically means that you're very much very yeah. specifically religious because you yeah. don't necessarily have at the fundamental age where you can like build a lot of uh, interpersonal relationships with different people in a public system. You are more or less following whatever your parents say, and that yeah. becomes your fundamental appreciation mm. for life. And so he said, well, listen, I'm a Christian. Then it surprised me, but like, what do you mean when you say you're an atheist? Because I know there's like different definitions of it. I just want to know where you're coming from at it. And so I explained the whole thing. And, you know, for me, I can break down a couple of sentences. And he's like, okay, that's cool. Because I would rather have my daughter be around you as like an atheist. I think that's a good exposure for her. But mm -hmm. I, I would compare to what she might get from like YouTube or online or what those people on the news are doing and stuff like that. Like, I'm good. She has you as an example. Uh, but here's my thing. Here's my bottom line. I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm very, this is my fundamental morals. Mm. I, 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 I really, I think you're a good person. And, um, I just want to let you know that like, uh, I love you and I, but I won't celebrate <laughs> what you're about. I won't celebrate atheism. I'm not going to go to your parades. I'm not going to, uh, celebrate if, if it's a federal holiday. I'm not about that. And I'm like, wait, we have parades. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not going to your conventions. If, if you please don't be too atheist around my daughter, or anything like that <laughs> until I give her a chance to explain yeah, what well. you're about. But like, I think you're a good example either way, but like, give me time to explain. Don't just like be an atheist around her. Like try to like, you know, be as normal or not normal. He didn't say normal, but like try to not be as atheist as possible. I'm like, it's totally fine. So like in my head, I was thinking about that. It got in my head. And I, 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 I did beat him by the way, <laughs> by like four strokes. Oh. But like in, in, as he was like telling me this, he was just missing putts left and right. He was like trying to hit a putt and he missed it. And he tried to put it. It's like, Whoa. you should focus on the game. You should focus on the game. But the main thing I was going to say was like, what is him win? <laughs> I just told him flat out, God loves me more. <laughs> but the idea that he said, listen, I don't want to go to your uh, your conventions. I don't want to celebrate your holidays. I don't want to go to your parades. I don't want to celebrate you. I thought that was a really interesting thing. And I said, I, you know, I followed up with like, that's fine. Uh, and if you ever have questions about, you know, atheism in, in a nutshell, more than welcome to come to me whenever you feel comfortable with doing it. Uh, but I don't know how to turn necessarily not believing in God off. But like we we had more small talk afterwards and went back to disc golf. I thought it was an interesting though thing though, because there's the idea of like, did I not ask for enough? I, is it not fair for me to demand someone to celebrate my atheism <laughs> or go to our conventions or go to our meetings left and right or attend our podcast? Well, 
it, uh, you kind of lost me when you were saying, you know, don't be atheist enough. Don't be, uh, you know, overtly atheist around my daughter. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, does he not see these overt Christians around other children, you know, or your children or, mm-hmm. or atheist children? And does he go to them and say, please don't be overtly Christian around these children? No, of course not. No, he doesn't. He comes to you and tells you that. That's the problem I have. Right, right, right. There's uh, also like he lives right next to a bunch of uh, Amish people. And so, mm-hmm. you know, the the idea would be I couldn't hang around a bunch of Amish people as an open atheist and be like, hey, let's go play some disc golf. So like, no, you one, you you don't respect or believe in our God. And two, we can't come to terms with you because we have a completely different worldview. Plus, you throw plastic. We don't do plastic. And I'm like, I see plastic in your buggies, guys. I know you're not following. <laughs> You're right. You're driving on our roads that we pay taxes for. You're you know, guess how we pay for those. We sell things, and there are things that are made out of plastic. You're benefiting from us, whether you choose to do so or not. Either way, though. Right. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Either way, I was. I, I asked him. Oh, John Richards, did you have any comments on the idea of like, um, what was the agenda that perhaps this Christian man was alluding to with regard to? Hey, I won't celebrate your, you know, your your atheist celebrations your holidays your your events um maybe your heroes is 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 that fair would you have asked for more would you have well, drawn I, a line I, wanna, I, I wanna row back a bit and okay point sure out, point out where he's coming from and why it's all wrong <laughs> why and, is he wrong? <laughs> it's all wrong okay <laughs> and it's because atheism ends with ism hmm. so he thinks that it's an ideology. He thinks it's a belief system. He thinks there are values and principles like right. he has right. for his ism, which right. is Christianity. Is eanity is another ending like ism. It's it's applied to belief systems, and so what he doesn't understand is he's expecting us to be like him and have a belief system, whereas. Atheism is right. not a belief system. Right. That's, ex- that's exactly what it is. It's I don't believe what you're telling me. By that's definition. all it is. Right. And th- so, a, so well said. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to say that first of all. But then th- the reason that he came up with this don't be atheistic around my daughter is because uh-huh. he thinks. He thinks that we've got attitudes similar to his of tribalism belonging to our tribe Mm -hmm. and demonizing him because he's not in our. We don't do that. You know, he can believe what he likes, whatever. If if he wants to believe in the Easter bunny, that's fine. Right. What we don't want is for him to impose his beliefs on us. Right. Or society in a systemic or administrative level like if you want to believe in heaven that's fine you can believe in heaven but don't you know cut health insurance because you think having a heart attack is a good thing and and you don't want to have medication or good quality health care for people because paradise is right behind the corner so what we will strive for is a good quality of life here with Mm. what we can intend with the current yeah. tests that we have to assess yeah, yeah. reality and if you have a more supernatural understanding of how the world works that's fine but don't let it impact the same objective yeah. reality that we're all sharing we absolutely yeah. this this is not a rehearsal this is the only life we're going to get so yeah. let's do the best we can while we're here yeah, so yeah. now i, I want to plug my global atheist news because Ooh. in this week's edition i've got a clip from some new zealand Jehovah's Witnesses. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Now you know you know the Jehovah's Witnesses are one of the most uh, extreme fundamentalist cults that they're in in Christianity. That sure, that's is. my mom you're talking about. But yeah, I, I'm I sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Ty's mom. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Jeez, now you're this making it so much harder for her to watch the show that I keep talking about. <laughs> You know, some of the times when I'm on the show, it's like, you're not talking about me, are you? It's like, no, we're talking about (laughs) atheism, religious beliefs, spiritual, philosophy, science. Let me tell you about these two people in Clip in New Zealand. Sure. Young young people, uh, they're cousins, actually. I think the bloke is 21 and and she's about seven years older, but they 
they've escaped from Jehovah's Witness. And of course, the outcome of that is you get shunned. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so she tells how she had to suddenly find her feet as a, a as a separate in, independent individual without the you know the support of a family and friends and colleagues she was suddenly all on her own and it's a big challenge to have to do that but mm. when you've got through that difficult part you mm. realize that all that you were taught is nonsense. The people out here, not in Joe, the JWs, don't hate you. There are some good ones. And this yeah. is what got her out of the JWs because she started questioning. She started going to her church leader and saying, listen, there are good people who are not JWs. Why should right. they die in the Armageddon? And why shouldn't they be excused like us? <laughs> and honestly, that, that's coming to the reality coming to faith yeah. what, what's funny to me uh ty you know jw is better than most of us um do they believe that it, it's predestined whether you go to heaven or not yes then i don't understand how they can say you know you're with us you're not with us if it could be anybody in the world that's predestined to go to heaven mm -hmm. whether they're a part of their religion or not so I, I want the are you putting me on trial to like ex try to explain something well, that i would like i am curious it. and if you can explain it that would help but <laughs> no it can't not explained. that's fine it's yeah. that's that's kind of the 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 concept of why i have an issue with it but you know the idea could be well no one knows what the list is right so uh -huh. like, without trying you don't know if you're actually not on the list or not so you're well anyway. i think not only that but like the people who are on the list potentially and this is the more radical this is the more out there uh can recruit people to host as like hey i'm on the list of people who will be chosen and i can pick my but nobody knows if you're on the list or not nobody knows on the list but the people who are nobody knows in charge i why are you why are you cross questioning me i'm just Spenders no I, I just i already told I was you trying I'm to make side. a point I'm, I'm to answer not what he was saying, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> surely, sure, surely the first consideration, the first criterion for being on this invisible list mm. is belonging to the JWs. Yeah, you would think it'd be like the first one, though, you know, they do make a lot of work trying to recruit people. And it's it's a conflict of it's a it's a juxtaposition of ideas isn't it of ideologies where it's like we already have a chosen list everyone who's been decided has been decided you would think that would mean okay so we don't need to keep recruiting constantly right knocking on people's doors sending out envelopes stuff like that no because the practice of being a Jehovah's witness is to share your light uh first peter uh or first timothy peter or something like that where you if you're on light a hill you are first here peter 315 i think thank you so much yes yeah. you are there to advocate so if you don't advocate mm -hmm. you're not really Jehovah's witness and the only the true Jehovah Witnesses can go to the afterlife, and that list has already been decided. So you have to just constantly keep shedding oh. the message of "I'm invited to a party, but you may not be able to come." But <laughs> here's your invitation, but it might be expired. But here's another invitation. You're just handing out expired invitations for a bulk of your time. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. I had this follow up conversation with him because I did have uh, a chance to drive. He drove us. He, I carpooled with him to the 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 course, and he took us back. Uh, cool. When we we're in the car, he wanted to do some follow up talks, and one of them was, you know, hey, I think you're a good person, and it wasn't in spite of your atheism. And I was happy that he didn't say this. Like, I think you're a good person, even though you're an atheist. It's I think you're a good person, and you're an atheist, and I think that's really interesting. And yeah. I I want to let him think that out, but I I I I followed up with also. You know, there are, do you think being a Christian automatically makes you a good person? And he says, no, I think there are, in fact, bad people who are Christian. Whoa. And I also think that there are good people who aren't Christian. And so Whoa. I said, then it's not necessarily the case that being a Christian makes you a good person. And he's, this is like some of the first time he's like rationalizing this, but he did follow up with, well, I can't be a good person if I'm a Christian, because if I think I'm good, if I think I'm good, and we'll talk about this in the next half, because if I think I'm good, then I have pride and ego, and Ooh. that is the root of all evil. So I can't be a good person. And I'm like, no, you are a good person. <laughs> Larry, what do you think? 
No, we, we've done whole shows on this before. It has nothing to do with whether you're a good person or not to get to heaven. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But who, you, but uh, I, you have to believe, you have to accept Jesus, and, yeah. and that's it. That's yeah. the, you can be any kind of person you want to be, yeah. but as long as, and, and a lot of Christians seem to take that at face value and just act any way they want to yeah, yeah. and say it's, it's God's, God's will right. and don't care. But as long as they believe they accept Jesus as their yeah, You can get in savior. with being a terrible person as long as you accept Jesus. And that's basically at it. the last minute, right. yeah. at the last minute, you don't have yeah. to accept him earlier. You can mm -hmm. accept him on his, on your deathbed. Yeah, exactly. So, but I'm more interested in the good people, honestly. Could it, why is that such a, why is that not as popular? I like good people. I like hanging around good people. I talked to, I said that. It's like, yeah, you know, I also said this too. There are, there are Christians who would not be friends with an atheist. Yeah. And you are a, a, a person who's good enough to see past someone's like lack of religion or color yeah. of their skin or even sexuality like regardless you like are a really cool guy he's like yeah i like to see people and see them pass it's like okay that's cool but the people who are don't do that and who are our christian can cite in their bible why yes. they don't get along with the other yes. people and he's yes. like well that's huh well that's a problem because it's how they're interpreting the gospel it's like it's <laughs> a literal interpretation it's like black and that's white Yes. Yeah, but there's a you, there's a relationship that I have in my heart, and like I I'm aware of the 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 wiggle room he was giving himself. My main takeaway is I'm glad you're the kind of Christian that could be set an example for other Christians of how to interact with people and to how to ask good questions. I want there to be more Christians like you, and I don't have a problem with you being a Christian, but I want more Christians to take an opportunity to ask these kinds of questions. Like, yeah, Christians and atheists alike. It's like, yeah, everybody should be asking questions <laughs> right. and getting along with people. What do you think, Larry? Yeah. When I sit out in public, you know, with an ask, ask an atheist sign, uh, I like to have several reasons printed up that I can, I can answer the question. Why are you doing this? Cause they, they, always ask me that why why are you sitting out here trying to press non-beliefs on everybody well first of all i'm not trying to press it i'm here to, as a resource and fee in case people want to come up and talk to me and ask me questions yeah i'm not out there knocking on doors or giving away you know literature uh to people on the street uh, but one of the reasons i'm out there um I've forgotten my rant. I forgot. Well, while, um, you're, while you're thinking what, you, what to say, I think what we are trying to do is clear our names of all the the doo doo that has been attached to it. Mm. You know, I mean, we mm -hmm. wouldn't have to. We wouldn't have to right. have ask an atheist right. if they hadn't right. got this jaundiced view. Right. Mm. That's, that helped me. That about, helped me. Rem yeah. Might remember what I was going to say. About what, what atheists are like. Is, uh, because like. the people who are representing what we are and who we are are generally the, the religious leaders of the of the church or whatever that are telling the people in the pews, you know, atheists are yes. bad people. You know, how can you possibly be good if you don't believe in Jesus? Right. You know, that type of thing. And that's one of my main reasons. And I usually thank them for coming and talking to me and trying to get an answer directly from an atheist yeah. which is a point you were making earlier ty yeah, yeah. thank you stop yeah. demonizing us for heaven's sake just stop demonizing. exactly maybe that's what we want as our end game we'll go into this more in the second half but like the idea of maybe the only thing we want is to stop being demonized and chastised and we'll accept Ooh. your tolerance you know you don't, i don't maybe you guys in the second half can tell me where all these parades and events and <laughs> are happening because i do know there's some of them i spoke at a couple of them <laughs> but as far as celebrations we'll go into it in the second half of the show larry why don't you take us out okay uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Daughter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's just take a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year now, have over a thousand members. We have weekly in-person meetings if you'd like to come down and talk to us every Tuesday evening in Knoxville, Soul City. 
at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top table, or if it's pretty weather, outside on the deck. Uh, you can find us online on Facebook, meetup.com, or at our website, knoxvilleatheist.org. Or you can Google Knoxville Atheists, just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Mm. Don't find one? Start yep. one. Uh, right. Where you want to pick up there? Wombat. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to pick up on the ride back home that I had with my friend who is a Christian who wanted uh -huh. to ask me some questions about atheism and let me know that he wasn't going to celebrate it, but he was happy that he knew that I was a good person, not in spite of my atheism, but in conjunction with it. And yeah. mm -hmm. it was an, uh, an enlightening concept for him. I asked, you know, there was time in the in the drive back for me to just, mm -hmm. you know, ask. I didn't. I don't ask these things. Christians just like to sometimes throw them out as like a you're just a weird little like green tiger that's sitting next to me in my car. I got to ask you what it's like to be a green tiger and like how I can explain my world to you. As an atheist, when you're when you're out and especially in Tennessee in the South, be prepared for just people explaining why they believe in God at you and like having like good follow up. So he was explaining, listen, I just, you know, for my worldview, I just don't, it makes sense to me that th when I look out at the world that everything here was just completely, you know, immaculately put together. Uh, my Sunday school teacher said, if you put a 747, if you put all the parts for a 747 out in the middle of the desert and you explode, you blow them all up, there's no way that plane's coming back together again. Yet you look at the world and everything's completely functioning. It just, it makes more sense to me that either God made everything or it's a complete random explosion. And I'm asking like, who told you it was a random explosion? It's like, well, I'm not saying anyone said that. I'm just saying it makes more sense to me that it has to be God. I'm like, how do you know those are the only two options? What method are you using to figure that out? It's like, well, I don't think, I'm not saying it's the only two options. I'm just saying it makes more sense to me. So like all I'm doing in my mind is getting to his first methodology that he's yeah. using to assess how his conclusions are true because I'm not going to attack the conclusion. I'm going to attack the methodology that he's using to link his identity to the conclusions that he has. And so I'm just, I'm hitting the, the top layers of the onion until we get to the first methodology statement. It makes sense to me. And I said, is it, so you're saying it makes sense to you and that's why you believe it's like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, is that a reliable way to come to a true conclusion? He's like, well, I think so. And I said, that's fair. If I brought in a Muslim or a person that believed in Jehovah Witness, because we were talking about that too. Um, and they said, it, it makes sense to me that my God is the one that made everything. Do you think they that's something they would say? And he's like, no, that's something they would say. They're all very different conclusions, very different gods. He's like, yeah, that's very true. Their gods are not true. Then what does it say about the method that you're using if oh. it can come to radically different conclusions by yeah. people who earnestly are following what makes sense to them? Because if I step on your gas pedal, that's a reliable way for the car to move forward as long as there's gas in the tank. Your daughter can step on that gas pedal. You can step on the gas pedal. We can all use the same method to come to the same the outcome. But the method that you're using for the most important decision in your life, right? Yeah. whether or not you believe in this God, is so potentially unreliable that anybody else can use that same method and arrive at a completely different conclusion. What does that say about your interest in trying to figure out something that's actually true? And he was quiet for a long time. I thought this good friend. He is thoughtful. He didn't mm -hmm. like, you know, over talk me. And he, he finally said, well, you know, I don't know everything. <laughs> but there's, the, exactly right. But there's no there may not be a good method. And 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 I'll, I'll just I'll just finish the story. Real quick. I'm sorry. Uh, I I said, yeah, he's like, there may not always be a good method for something, Ty. And I was like, that's true. But when I run into that situation, what I do is I just say. I don't know. Larry. Nothing painful about that. Mm. Right. No, um, there's a meme going around the internet. And, um, <laughs> you want to talk about yeah, me? There's one or two, That's, I'm sure. I'm so glad you didn't let me interrupt my story. <laughs> <laughs> no, it it's, uh, says you can't. Um, people who don't, who are basing their beliefs on things that are not rational. Uh, cannot be talked, cannot be reasoned with. You can't reason with a person who's irrational. Hmm. But uh, the, I feel that uh, all of us, I mean, I used to believe, you used to believe, Ty, yes, John, you were always an atheist. Well, um, but I mean, it happens every day that people get argued out of irrational beliefs. And we need to uh, fight against that concept if we can. Right. Uh, people do uh, get argued out of their beliefs all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to touch on 
the the proposal of having parades and and uh, conventions because I do that. I don't do parades, but I stage gatherings and put on shows where I have very academic, top expert speakers, and I invite people and they come and we have a good time. There's an auction, there's food, you know. We're meeting together like-minded kindred spirits, you know, <clears throat> but we're not proclaiming any doctrine. Mm. When we're not saying you must believe this, that, or the other. Mm. In, in fact, I had a, a really good um, unsolicited review from the last event that we held in London from this lady <clears throat> who said, I actually attended. I'm one of the few people who was privileged to attend this wonderful, magical event. Mm. And she goes on to say that all the speakers were very good and to my surprise, extremely humble. Well, why is she surprised? <laughs> eh? This is it's it's quite normal for people. The, the speakers included Lawrence Krauss and uh, uh, Richard Dawkins. And, you know, and, and she was surprised that these people are humble. Well, why? Because people who accept that they don't have all the answers you'd expect them to be humble it's the dogmatic ones who claim to have the answers that are hubristic it's the other way around from what she expected anyway i'm staging another one of these events in september in the midlands this is i was talking about this last time we were together it's um near birmingham which is not alabama <laughs> but in the midlands of england and um the reason I do it is not to promote atheism because it's actually atheism. Ah. And <laughs> what I do is I try to overcome the don't ignorance. Coin a, don't coin a new term that I think Christians are going to take that one day and make a website out of it. It's like, where are the atheisms? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so what I'm trying to do is dispel the ignorance hmm. that makes people come to the decision like your carpool friend did, yeah. that it makes sense to me. Right. It, it shouldn't make sense to you specifically. Hmm. It should be out there for everyone to see right. and come to a conclusion about Yes, it's a weak basis. And listen, it's nothing wrong for having something that makes sense to you. Like if I turn on a light switch, I understand how light switches work. That makes sense to me. Like that's fair. But the problem is, is it's not the most reliable way to reach a conclusion. No. And no. if it's the most important decision in my life or the most yeah. important relationship in my life, I would yeah. love to have a higher quality or a higher hmm. standard of exactly. methodology to reach that conclusion. Because yeah. clearly people could have different reasons for why it makes sense to them that a light switch works, but the light switch is still going to work. So like, yeah. it's more important for me not to have a, an assumption that uh, that's based off of a reality, but rather have a, like an in-depth understanding that I can test where mm. we can test our different understandings of how light switch work and actually yeah. knock down the ones that do and don't. And that way, if I'm wrong, because I care about being right, I can correct myself to the most accurate methodology that's out yeah, there, yeah. not just rely on, well, it makes sense to me. It's like, no, I actually tested it against other hypotheses that are out there. And we actually found something that that's an accurate model for how light switches actually work. If we do it yeah. for light switches and we can do it for cars, let's do it for God as well. There's yeah, no yeah. reason not to. There's no reason not to. Uh, well, you, only, you only have to look back in history to see that a lot of things that once made sense to people, yeah, yes. you know, the earth is flat, the sun right. goes around it, you know, heavy items will fall faster than light ones iron right. ships will sink it goes on and on and on there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow right this, right 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 this is all uh examples of how making sense to you right. is right. not a good te technique for coming to a reliable conclusion absolutely true absolutely true i mean i think back on like germ theory just the idea of like oh germs don't exist what are you talking about tiny little animals that live in my hands animals are big things that are in grasses now excuse yeah. me while i go give birth i'm a yeah. doctor 
<laughs> I don't need to wash my hands. Uh, there's the other fun thing where I asked. Um, so after we got rid of it makes sense to me, we asked, I, I went down one extra layer. You know, typically faith is the number one core, but I let the people walk me there and it was a short car ride. So the next layer that we got to was, well, it's when I just look at the world, it looks designed to me like this world just seems designed. And I, I wanted to dwell on that a bit. It's like, what do you mean by designed? It's like, well, it just looks super complicated. Like you look at, you know, how grass grows and then the animals eat the grass and then they fertilize the grass. Like there's just such a level of complexity there that it has to be designed. It's just so intricate. Like it would take forever for someone to like build that. It's so complicated. And I'm like, how do we recognize design? And I asked that in two parts. The first one was, I asked, why do you recognize design? One, to understand what he means by design, but also what methodology he's using to recognize if something actually is designed. And he said, well, if it's really complicated, it's designed. And I followed up with, you know, if I had two light bulbs, one that took one step to screw into a hole, and the other one takes a thousand steps to screw into a hole, but they both make the same light, they both cost the same. Which of the two light bulbs was better designed? And he's like, well, obviously the first one that only takes one step is like, yeah, because it's more simple. What we value in designing and engineering is simplicity. I can put an extra engine in this car and get more or less the same horsepower or I make set it up so it gets the same horsepower. But why would I add an entirely different extra moving part to a vehicle if I can get away with the same horsepower with just one engine? You know, yep. like we always strive for simplicity in things. Yep. Simplicity is the hallmark of design, not complexity. And he's like, well, it's simple. It looks simple to God. <laughs> I'm like, you have an extra nipple. You don't need it. <laughs> Your body has extra parts. But I didn't want to dwell on that a little bit more. Instead, I said, you know, how do I, would you like to know how I recognize design? And, and that way I'm not just like forcing you down like a series of questionings. I said, I recognize design by comparing them to things that aren't designed. And yeah. so I said, like, if I gave you a smartphone watch and a rock, I would say, I can compare these two things and see that there's actually manufacturing logos on one and mm -hmm. like components that come from different areas. Whereas this rock seems to be like one homogenous thing that's created in nature that we can mm -hmm. like observe and, and, and verify where it even came from, maybe even fit it back into its original location. Whereas all these parts are desperately processed from many, many different sources. Like I can, I can go to the factories where these things are made. And he's like, yeah, because rocks aren't designed and smart watches are designed. But my follow-up was that is, well, if you believe this whole universe was created and designed, you don't have a frame of reference for yeah. something that's not designed. It's like- The rock should have been designed in, yeah. in, that, in that story. You're, you're looking at area. everything. You're looking at everything and saying everything's a design, but you don't have a frame of reference for what something that isn't designed is. It's like you went into your clothing drawer and pulled out a shirt and said, this is a sock. By the way, I'm very confident that this is a sock, even though you're pointing at a shirt. By the way, I don't know what things that aren't socks look like. You know, I don't have a frame of reference. It's like, well, then you don't, you can't claim that things are one way or the other until you know what an example of something is and what something isn't is, right? And when he, when he understood that, he's like, well, God is my thing that isn't designed or created. And I'm like, well, do you have a way to test God? He's like, no, I can't test God. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, well, until then, you can see why someone who is from my perspective, trying to understand what you mean when you claim things are the case, oh. why I can struggle right. with intellectual honesty, recognizing that you may not necessarily have a frame of reference to make the claims validated or justified. He's like, no, that makes sense. I, again, I don't know everything. I'm like, that's fine. That's fully fine. I'm in a situation like that. I just generally say, I don't know. And that's generally what atheism is. It's like, uh, yeah. I don't have enough information to be convinced that this belief is true. So I don't believe it. Nor do I know if it's true. But my atheism is fueled by my agnosticism. And we had talked about those definitions before. Uh, so a coconut is okay. natural. But the two halves of a coconut that you use to make the sounds of a horse... <laughs> clapping they're designed <laughs> okay yeah 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 exactly and you know the weird thing is i am willing to say that i don't identify as an atheist i don't know if that's fair for everybody else on the show but atheist is just a characteristic of a state of being that i'm in right now it's a way to describe where i'm at but i don't have any 
I don't identify with it with like a, a like any more than just saying like no I'm my it's my default state until one of these religions come along and actually convince me that their god is true until then yeah, yeah. So I have I'm willing to abandon it but yeah. I, I I I'm in a position where no one's making a good argument I'm not telling yeah. you guys you're wrong I'm just saying I don't believe you <laughs> I've have... not met your burden of proof Right, I, right. I've, had, I've had misgivings for, for many years about the word atheist, because, of course, being demonized means that we have even less respect in the community than estate agents, for example. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> or politicians. But, right, uh, right. but so I, if, if there was a word lack theism, I'd go for that. Ooh. Because, because that's all. Or, or, or go back to my, you know, atheism. That would be my preferred label yeah it's it's a shame because like a lot of the terms that i follow now that best describe me all deal with not doing something that's very popular by other people right and it's when you say you're an atheist it doesn't tell you anything else about you other than a lack of belief but it doesn't say about the things that you do believe in and i feel like it puts unnecessary focus on the lack of a belief in a particular religious claim than it does the fact that everybody doesn't believe 99.9% .9 of most God beliefs that are out there. So like, why are we making that one distinction on that one extra God that most people believe in? Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he, the guy who I was carpooling with was also very honest with like, you know, listen, when you love people or versus like, I understand that I don't believe in Thor, Jehovah Witness, Muslim, like you only believe, I only believe in one more God than you. Like I get that. Uh, it doesn't sound like he's coming to term. He also understands based on my, where I was born, my geopolitical location will dictate what I believe. And I understand that I'm teaching my daughter X, Y, Z so that she can have a good path forward. Like I can understand that could be fundamental too. He's just, he's asking good questions, but I don't, my end goal is not for him to become an atheist. My end goal for most Christians, in fact, is not to become an atheist. It's just for them to tolerate the fact that atheism does exist and that mm. it's an okay state to be in. Yeah. And to understand what it actually is and okay. they don't have to celebrate it they don't have to come to our meetings or conventions oh. but they can at least not dictate how society operates exactly. Exactly. in a way that affects or our demonizes life. yeah that, yeah that would be one of them too yeah or you know like don't chastise don't demonize well, I, like rule policies uh, that are against you know what our what we're trying to do so i put a, a three point list into the chat that we had on on the way here Okay. That uh, I wanted, um, I wanted theists to stop miseducating our children. I want our children to be better prepared for life than to be told myths. You know, to believe mm. in myths. And I want them to keep their faith-based opinions out of government. There's an mm. interesting example of this in uh, my lo my global atheist news again, because in Australia. They don't have many problems. I'm hoping that you're going to talk with me about this later on. Sure, uh, sure, sure. Right. They don't have many problems, but one they have is that in the state of Victoria, they have banned opening their council meetings with prayers. So what they do instead is they have a minute silence when they individually think about whatever they want. You know, if it's a, if it's a belief system, they can do that in their heads. But if they just want to commemorate those who have died fighting for their country or whatever, that's what that minute is for. It's silent. OK, so what happened in this particular meeting was one of the councillors grabbed the silence and started praying loudly. <laughs> and he was he was uh, soundly told off. But wow. uh, good, good. The other things that I so I want I don't want them to influence government with their faith-based ideas. I want them to keep their faith-based ideas out of government. Yes, and that would be great. That's that's one of the main things I'm saying. I would love to have that. Yeah. I, will, I don't mind having a religious president or a religious prime yeah. minister, but I don't want their religion to affect my life. Like right now yeah. we have a religious president, but yes. he's not making policies, as far as I'm aware, he's not making policies that are directly saying, you need to go to Catholic yeah. school. And we saw yeah, but interestingly, on the prime minister front, our current prime minister is a Hindu. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, so we've got four things that we mm. we want with our end goals. Mm. Don't demonize us. Yes. Don't ex don't govern us with your 
belief system. Correct. Don't tell our children nonsense. And the final one is- You said this was a three-point list. Yeah, I've added one. It was, a, right. it, was, <laughs> it, was it was Larry's don't demonize this. It's going to be- Yeah, yeah, play yeah. nice. I like that. I can't one. count. <laughs> Atheists can't count. Surely you know that. <laughs> but the final, uh, final one fine is- print. Probably, yeah. The final and one is probably, probably the best. Mm. It is- Keep your noses out of our genitalia. I love that. Uh, I can throw out one reason why I love this so much. Um, I came to an understanding over like the last couple of weeks after our conversations and had some time to think about this, that there most people in the world are biological male or biological female. Like it is, it, you're going to fall into one of those two categories. However, there is also a very valid category in between of a cornucopia of different kinds of intersex people. By intersex, I mean people who have like ambiguous genitalia to people who are phenotypically male, but they were born and they're, they're in birth made twins or like they became a twin and then they refused again. And so they are phenotypically male, but they're hybrids where maybe their pancreas or their liver has female chromosomes in it, but they are, they look male, but parts of their body because they infuse, they fuse from like another embryo it's so crazy how there's so much different forms of humanity in between the these this two seemingly or apparent binary states there is just as much of a valid uh uh spectrum if you will of intersex people in between and what's really cool is that is it, that category has been inundated with a lot of pestering from religious points of views from saying oh your genitalia looks male enough but there's something wrong with it let's cut it off non-consensually or or let's modify this people put them on hormone therapy so they can appear as what a female should look like and it's caused the people who are on these more they are just caught in between what is essentially just nature to abide by standards of what a man or a woman should be from a physicality point of view. And the kids never asked for that. And so we're at a point now where um, some of those kids can like, and I guess in America form uh, file lawsuits. But I feel like if we were to just come to a, a better understanding of like the science of the empathy, as we were talking about in previous shows and recognize that, you know, on an individual level, we can like assess where someone's coming from and recognize that these differences aren't necessarily harmful and recognize that it could just be an accepted category of its own and then now everything falls into the 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 first models that we set everything set everybody up for i would love to see something like that but yeah keep their noses out of the people's genitalia it's okay if someone has like an extra finger like don't amputate that off it's okay it's not going to be a big deal it's okay if someone has like a light i don't know like a thick eyebrow a baby with thick eyebrows like no She's female. She needs to have her eyebrows shaved off. Let's start surgery to like reshape her or the structure of her forehead. There's some really crazy think stories that are out there, yeah. but largely involving genitalia. And I'd just be more accepting if we had less of a pure puritanical point of view on these things and just let people be who they are. What do you think, John Richards? I'm bursting again. <laughs> talk to so, me, talk to me, talk to so, me. So you mentioned the six finger syndrome. Do you know where that is most common? It's is it placed in? Yeah, it's go on it. It's in the Mennonites because they marry no. their cousins. They're not, oh, allowed, no. they're not allowed to outbreed. So yeah, have, it's it's typically small pockets of people who don't go out and, yes, and, yes. and marry more people and bring yes. more people into their genetic. They get more. So the more other things. thing, the other thing you mentioned is chimeras, where yes. one twin has absorbed a few cells of the other, and mm -hmm. is actually partly one person and partly another person, but made in the shape of one person, and the incidence of that. There's only ever been a hundred confirmed cases in humans. So in my opinion, uh, the lengths that it takes to confirm a case doesn't necessarily represent the total number of potential cases that could be out there. No, no, of course in it, my opinion, still, that's still a hundred value. Uh, on sure. a, that's still a hundred va people of value. Mm, and yeah. it's still part of, in my mind, mm. a continuum of a variety of different kinds of stories of people who are caught in between. And I wouldn't say those chimeras should go through surgery to oh, remove you know, the body yeah. parts that don't have the proper chromosomal patterns yeah. and be replaced with something that's more apparent for or yeah. proper for their, yeah. their sexual basis. It's just like, it, it's fine. If you're intersex, that's totally cool. I'd say yeah. let that just be, it's a part of what uh, a beautiful understanding of humanity is and recognize yeah. that that's a natural part of nature. And I would never say, and I would say this too, I would never say that it's a 
the the what's in between is proportional to what's on the edge it's clear to me that most people find i know it's clear to me that most people fit in the category of male and female but i do think that there is a continuum or a spectrum in between and we should recognize that the system of sex at least from my point of view is not one or the other but actually aspects of both in a much more nuanced model yeah. that'd be well, my nobody, nobody has any authority to mm. say that you're acceptable and you're not. That's ridiculous. Mm, I love that. Yeah, right. exactly. Not even God. Mm. <laughs> Larry, sorry for <laughs> taking us long. What? Uh, any final thoughts before we should wrap up the show? Visit uh, let... Rethought Productions. Yeah. See mm -hmm. my latest uh, videos. Nice. Very cool. Larry? Excellent. Oh, uh, What about you, Ty? Uh, listen, if you are beating a Christian at disc golf, the way how you rub it in is you, when you, if you make your putt, you look at him dead in the eyes and you just say, God just loves me more than you. That's all there is to it. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> this program does not condone. <laughs> Get in their head. Get in their head. Get in their head. <laughs> yeah. It's snowball. Anyway, my, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button when you get there for a radio show, archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. My YouTube channel handle is at, at Doubter5, and you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, and a lot of people do, you can get help from recoveringfromreligion.org. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody.